Time Click with Jiminy's special guest, Bill Maher and Steve Martin. I'm Adrian Van Voorhees, and am I the only one who needs a click fix? No, we do! Damn straight! Ladies and gentlemen, Jiminy Click. Your Johnson, Mother Nature's about to do the twist. She's looking meaner than Charlie Bronson. With a snap, those Brooklyn punk has got him pissed. For the claws, I'll be chasing. Cause it's something that I gotta do. Grab your shoes and start a lacing. Your mother of a twister, I need to meet her sister. It's coming. Oh, please, please. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness, someone's out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that is the 1030 number from the short-lived Broadway musical Batten Down the Hatch. It's based on the movie Twister. <laughs> and I think it's such a shame things don't last. Four performances isn't much, Adrian. No, as you recall, they used real cows in that production. I surely do. In fact, the last time I saw a cow flying that high was when the wonderful Bruce Valanche performed in Peter Pan. And kudos to Lincoln Center for casting Tito Jackson as Hook. Great. But before we go on, I suppose we must address the big controversy. By now, I'm sure you've all seen my infamous interview with Larry King. And of course, the late night jesters have been having a field day mocking me and having a good old time at my expense. Which I think is mean. I do. But if there's anyone left who hasn't heard about it, what happened was Larry King blindsided me. Yes, he did. He blindsided me with a question I simply was not prepared for. And, well, <laughs> the rest is soundbite history. Let's take a look. I've got to ask you something, Jiminy, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but last weekend, you appeared at Bob Jones University. Yes, did I did. Did you have any hesitation about doing that? Oh, no, no, not at all. In fact, I was, I was right confused when I arrived, because according to my Palm Pilot, I was going to Bob Saget's for nickel poker. But, but you did appear at Bob Jones University. Yes, yes. Which most people would consider an absolute breeding ground for bigotry. Really? Really. Then on top of that, you did a tasteless comedy routine with, with Bob Jones himself that shocked even members of that audience. But see, now, I thought it went rather well. Yeah. Let's let our viewers decide. Oh, we're gonna look at something. Oh, I love this part of your show, when people look at something. That's usually when I switch. Hello, hello. This is my very good friend, Bob Jones, number three. Hey, Chinaman, where's my laundry? No ticket, no laundry. Yeehaw! That's funnier than I thought it was. Bob Jones had gone completely off script. It was like working with Robin Williams, who I've never worked with. You don't think that's an insult to Asian Americans? Insult? I love Asian. I, 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 I love Asian Americans. My daddy's best friend was Mr. Ho who owned a restaurant down the street, Chinese restaurant, and he had five beautiful daughters. And the eldest was Lena, and I used to date her. And she was the best-looking hoe of the bunch. <laughs> now, was that innocent bit of frivolity worth all the hoopla? Miss Gathercole, did you find that offensive? Not in the slightest, but I cannot speak for the room. <laughs> okay, audience, how do you feel? <laughs> Um, in that case, let me just say that 
if I have at all spoken out of turn, I beg for your forgiveness. And I am so heartily and profusely engulfed in sorrow. That having been said, we'll be back with the wonderful Bill Maher to get you dead. And later, Jiminy sits down with Steve Martin. Is without question a true rascal. He'll say anything just to ruffle your feathers, which I think is wonderfully courageous. Because for so long, we as a society labored under the false impression that being polite and respectful was a good thing. But boy, did he prove us wrong. <laughs> oh my God, I'm scared at what he's going to do to me or say or even think. Please welcome the wonderful Bill Mayer. You're here. Thank oh, you. Oh, this is exciting. Thank you. It's pronounced Mar. Do you know that? Bill, Bill, oh my goodness, I didn't know that. For years now. And you're on this show politically incorrect, which yes. I've never seen. And I've heard wonderful reactions to it. Some people think that you go very far. But I suppose that's your edge and that's your gimmick. And as the wonderful Gypsy Rose Lee said, you've got to have a gimmick, whether it's a boa, a constrictor, or a word. Or <laughs> what is, what, why do you, do you ever feel, do you ever feel that, that, that you must... This is the easiest talk show I've ever done. Why is that? I don't have to talk. You, 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 you seem to, you seem to, you, you seem to... You look great, by the way. Have you lost weight? Do you know what? I, I'll tell you something. Because I think you found it again. I'm just... <laughs> but this is the... This is the... This is the <laughs> evil comic mind of Bill... Mar. Mar. United States doesn't have a royal family. Do you wish they had a royal family? Uh... What a silly question, but... <laughs> Yeah, I think it might be a good idea because the royal family takes a lot of the heat that our first family has to. If we're in our, our government, excuse me, <laughs> if the president, for example, has oral sex in the Oval Office. No, when, who? <laughs> the president. The, uh, the, uh, the past president. Oh, Bill Clinton. I was going to say, because George W., I can't imagine that would happen. I've always been curious watching you because of the way you are, what drugs you may have done in the past that are still affecting you now. For a while, I smoked catnip, which was, was, which was very popular at the University of Wisconsin. But, you know, that was the era. That was the late 60s, and everyone was experimental. But I think drugs are wrong. I think they're bad. Bill Maher, do you think drugs are bad? No. You don't? No, I don't. You think they're good? It depends. Drugs are like fire or cars. They can cause harm and they can be good. This whole country takes drugs every day. Everyone here is on some drug. They're either on caffeine or Prozac or vodka. Are you high now? <laughs> Because you seem high, I, and, I, and you look deluded, and you I, polished off about 17 donuts backstage. I, I, so I'm just I wasn't assuming. before I got out here, but let me tell you, you're a buzzkill. But uh, <laughs> I can't afford. That's more of the Bill Maher zinger, and it's, it's like... Just your bra. <laughs> no, this is, this oh, okay. is just pecs, That's just right. pecs working. Trying to help. Doing Pilates every, every chance I can get. Pecs, those are yeah, pecs. But you were in... <laughs> you were in a work... You are a wonderful... Could you not spit right on me? No. Um, I'm a DC car like Bill Maher. Oh, that was, uh... <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Do you want me to do the whole, do you need a full Heimlich? That's later. Okay. Um, what was DC, what was Mr. G like? It was an acting clinic. It was. If for me, I never went to a formal acting school. No. <laughs> but, but I consider the time I spent on DC Cab to be an acting school. Did Mr. T wear all that gold jewelry then, Bill? He started that whole film. You were in a wonderful film. I loved you in this film, Cannibal Women in the Avocado Jungle of Death. I believe okay. it was a Merchant Ivory film, and I, don't, I never saw the credits. <laughs> Tell me about that film, Bar Bill. Ma Bill. <laughs> well, it was 1988. 1988. 
<laughs> yeah. They You're got. young then. And uh, when they offered me this part, I said, sure. And I got to spend three months in the jungle. And of course, when I say the jungle, it was San Bernardino. And did you have to actually say lines in this or was it just about swimming? <laughs> no, it was a movie. Well, I loved. I the, the four minutes I saw, I was riveted. I really, I, I thought it was very strong. I thought, I think I said a good statement too about feminism because I think feminism get too far. Don't you think, Bill? Well, I think uh, the feminists uh, won the battle and lost the war, if you know what I mean. And no, I don't. I'm sure you don't. You share a birthday with Melissa Rivers. Is her birthday January twentieth? Yes. <laughs> yes, and I'll tell you. Well, then we do. You know who else shares my birthday? Who? Howard Hughes? No. <laughs> Are you serious, Bill? Yes. Do you know who also? It's Rudy. Rudy from the first Survivors, the old man. <laughs> I believe in the law and the one my way. That man. Yeah. And, and, and he shared. I like Rudy. He, he is politically incorrect, Rudy. But he would. But Rudy would. He says what he thinks. Do you think He's that... a man. He's a, he's a veteran. He's a veteran, and that means someone who has been to war. war. <laughs> do you think, Bill? Do you think, Bill, that most people are politically incorrect? No, I think uh, most people nowadays are politically correct, and uh, our show tries to expose the facade. And facade. Do you do outer you, surface? Outer surface. Just expose say the outer facade. expose the outer surface. Your little lungs are too small to hotbox with God. What does that mean? It's rap. Oh, I love rap. I do love rap because No, it, you don't. No, I don't. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Mary Lou Henner and Tony Danza. Do you think anything really happened on Taxi? Or do you think they were just good friends? Mary Lou was very upfront in her book about the fact that when she was in her heyday in Hollywood, she enjoyed the company of a great number of men. And she enjoys sex. Do you think that's something that, that, that women shouldn't say? That there just should be a male thing to say? Or do you believe in the equality of the sexes, Bill Maher? <laughs> <laughs> I believe in the complete equality of the sexes. I think it is liberating for a woman to be able to embrace her sexuality. If you really believed in your attributes as an equal human being, then you would give your sexuality away instead of holding it back as some sort of prize that you had to wait for. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but my lady and I have been together for 23 wonderful years. We have a very active sexual life, sometimes four or five, you know, Times a year? Pops a week. That's great. I always thought there was a whole front and that you were gay, but that's you know, just what I've heard. Now, why isn't that interesting coming from a 44-year-old bachelor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. You are the best, and this has been fun, and I want you to come back every other day if it's possible. <laughs> what am I, a fly? <laughs> no. We'll be back after this. Coming up next, Jiminy talks to Steve Martin. Now available, Celebrities Caught on Take 6. You'll get John Malkovich for Mr. Freak Out. Joe London Cat Fight. <laughs> Jiminy Glick's Giant Man at Bob Jones University. Hillary Clinton Card Tricks. Ted Koppel, Belly Flop. You'll also get Seal Award Wipeout, Larry Hagman, Gas Attack, Ted Kennedy doing the Whirly Bird, Orrin Hatch, Chuggle Up, Fergie's Black Face Blunder, Louis Farrakhan, Pork Chop Pig Out, Gwyneth Paltrow, Blowing Chunks, Barbara Bush, Bikini Weekend, The Dalai Lama's Transvestite Slugfest, and many, many more. Celebrities caught on tape six. Not available in stores. Jiminy Glick. I'm sitting here with one of the great stars of Hollywood. One of the true insiders of Hollywood. Wonderful Steve Martin. How are you? I'm good. You were born Stephen... Glenn. Glenn Martin. <laughs> you've, really, you've really done your research. So that was after Glenn Gould, the wonderful piano player who would make all those memories. He'd make all those... No, it wasn't, it wasn't after him. It wasn't after him. No, it was him. after my father. Glenn. Your father, and his, and his name was... Glenn. And so therefore, Glenn Gould was just a family friend? 
<laughs> no, we didn't really know Glenn Gould, or we had never actually even heard of Glenn Gould. Your family were hillbilly types who didn't listen to records. Yes, and we made moonshine. You were known for a long time as Pig Eye Jackson. What's that about, Pig Eye Jackson? I was known as Pig Eye Jackson as kind of a... What, to the ladies? <laughs> no, just in my act. Let's see a little bit of Pig Eye no, Jackson No, I didn't now. do. I didn't do it. So how come you were called Pig Eye Jackson? It was kind of an alias, like a comic alias. Oh. Yeah. And then it, you tried it for a while and it didn't play. No, it, it did play. It, it was didn't just play. that it was a. Uh, Not according a, to people I've uh, spoken to. Uh -huh. I loved all the different catchphrases you do, like, uh, um, I want to say, I want to say, I pity the fool, but that was Mr. T. It's an exciting interview. When do we get to a question? I don't get, are you doing more of your irony humor? Yes, actually, I'm sorry. And do you think that's what's kept you out of the big, big money? Well, it keeps your work at, at a certain level of, of, of being good, but not very good. And I think that's a great place to be. I would think that when you do jokes, you'd want people to respond and laugh. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes they do when it's a different type of person different or audience. Different type of person, yes. a different type of audience. Mm -hmm. An audience, let's say, of more f with booze on their breath. No. I, I think of it as a, a smarter crowd. Who? The, the audience, for example, that would get my humor is more... Uh, De Kooning. Who's de Kooning? Uh, de Kooning is an important American painter. Did you see the movie Pollock? About the American painter Pollock? Uh, no, Did I you see it. the movie Lust for Life? Did you see the movie The Agony and the Ecstasy about Michelangelo? I saw Madame X with Lana Turner, and in the background there was a wonderful abstract painting that everyone pretended to care about. And I think that that was a de Kooning. Oh, my goodness, Waiting for Godot with Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Uh, that was very similar to doing Waiting for Godot uh, as if it were done with Robin Williams. Did he ever do that wonderful thing he does as, with a laugh meter? No, because it's a written play. It's written by one of the great playwrights, Samuel Beckett. They and didn't straight jacket Robin, did they? Well, that's not what it's about. If they straight Jack and Robin, they're making a mistake because Robin's free. Certain people like yourself need the lines. Mm -hmm. You were in Shop Girl. Who no, was in actually, Shop Girl with you? No, Shop Girl was a, is a book. Is a book. That I wrote, yes. That you wrote. Yes. And it, 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 what's you, it, you felt that you saw it in a movie theater? What's, what's Shop Girl about? It's about a relationship that... Seen it. Old, yeah, okay. What do you think of Jan Michael Vincent? Well, I think he's a fabulous actor. He's he a fabulous has, actor. And he has great hair. My wife and I always yeah. used to order in Greek and watch Airwolf. And now when I see a rerun of Airwolf, it makes me sad, which doesn't make you sad, T. Martin. That's not my area of interest, really. Airwolf. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't know the show that well. It's a wonderful show. Mr. T's in it! Yeah. And at one point, Mr. T, it's, 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 he gets all, there's a helicopter that comes in and George Papard, who was living then, We'll, we'll look up and, and, and Jan Michael Vincent, you can tell there's a little, feel, there's a little bit of, you know, um, too much drinking the night before, but he still does his lines, he knows his lines, and when people put Meg, Jan Michael Vincent down, makes me angry, Steve. Mm -hmm. Glenn. But that's not really why I'm here. So many people were born on your birthday. Halle Berry. Was born on August 14th? Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Catherine Bell and Jag. <laughs> Pardon me? Was also born on your birthday. Do you think women uh -huh. should be in the military, Steve Martin? Uh, I'm just trying to get back to uh, Catherine Bell. From JAG. JAG. She was born on your birthday. What's JAG? JAG is a wonderful series about military people and mm -hmm. all the goings and comings and mm -hmm. goings. But why would you think I would have an opinion on that? Because Catherine Bell was born on your birthday. Uh, oh, uh, that's for me. Excuse oh, me. is it for you? Yes. Uh-huh. The answer is D, the Euphrates River. Is that who I think it was? Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm with Hollywood royalty, I, and you are so calm with it. But Good. I've hardly talked about my movie. Oh, yes. What were you here promoting? Oh, actually, it was a website. And what's the website, Steve Martin? What, what, how can we find what your latest thing is? Uh, just uh, adultdiapers.com. Now, I don't want to be indiscreet, mm -hmm. but can you actually do a stinky and then go up publicly? In the adult diapers? You mean? Yes. I never asked, really. I, I, so you it's probably on something? the label somewhere. Why did you think people are wearing adult diapers? To give them bulk at that age? I think they've got it. No, I think it's just a convenience. convenience. Sometimes you can't find a restroom. You might be on a date, and why pull over? But that's where the, the question mark around the word stinky. Uh -huh. Can you do a stinky in them?
Because if you can't, what's the point of them? Because anyone can just pee their pants. I'm Get it? Five minutes ago, <laughs> never felt better, never felt freer. But to do a stinky while talking to a big Oscar kind of considered actor through the years, wouldn't that be a mistake? And wouldn't I feel liberated by wearing an adult diaper? Adult diapers to be free to do a stinky. <laughs> oh, Jiminy. Jiminy. Well, that's my opinion. I've been talking to the wonderful Steve Martin. He's fun. <laughs> all right, Steve, thanks. Okay. Thank you. You know what? I gotta go because all this talk of what we were talking about before. <laughs> Primetime Glick will be back after this. <laughs> I love the bubble bit. Has this been a fun evening for a Bill Maher? Uh, yeah, up until now. <laughs> That's our show, and for those of you who insist on drinking and driving, do me a favor and gun it, so you'll be off the freeway before I get there. Good night. Oh, God bless you. So, Bill, you, what do you do? You go home and you just, what do you, what, how does, how does a Bill Maher end an evening? My ass is sticking to the seat. Well, that's a good thing. That's why we like it in here. It's when it doesn't stick that you want to sue someone. <laughs> okay.